Here or here? Roll it, please. 58, BA, take one. Welcome back. Come back into the studio. I know, I'm really crazy today. It's the start of a new season. I've had a great summer. And I just want to show you some of the stuff that's been happening. First thing is, I must thank Ron Alexander. His article in the New York Times last year, I haven't had a chance to thank him in a long time, and it opened up a lot of incredible doors because all of a sudden people were taking me seriously. Of course, in the Times article, the Franklin Mint and their classic almanac, which goes out to everybody who buys something from the Franklin Mint and did a great story on television tours. And I'm always traveling around the country. Maybe you have a little box of film in your cupboard. Just don't throw it away. Someone gave you that one film as a gift. Well, that one film could be some lost work of TV or film art that nobody has, and you have the last print of it. What are you listening to? This Remco transistor radio I made myself. It's Antique Toy World. Great cover story of yours, truly. And a great story by Tom Fry on my work locating rare works of television art, especially toys. And the Crankin'. Wow. Real ice cream in a minute. You'll be the most popular boy or girl in the neighborhood. Only the frosty ice cream machine comes with cups, spoons, and ice cream. Everything for only three dollars. Of course, we've got more shoot and shell gun commercials. Like the one the gunfighters wore. A Mattel Durahide holster takes any punishment you can dish out. And that look of hand tooling is just like a fine western saddle. Great with Mattel shoot and shell fan or pistols. The only guns with real fan in action. Shoots safe shooting shells and fires greeny stick'em caps. This is the gunfighter set with two fanner pistols. The rugged Durahide holster comes in black or brown, single or double. But Gary Darrow from Darrow's Fun Antiques sent me this guy. This is one of our next quiz questions. Anybody tell me who made this gun? Colts the man and Colts the gun, a team that's hard to beat. Now, the quiz question for tonight's show for the first 10 people that call or write in. What company made the Colt 45? And of course, you all know, unless you're a member of the Biograph Secret Squadron, you can't call up and ask us. You want to know what your Secret Squadron number is. Also, later I'll tell you the simple rules for joining the Secret Squadron. But you must promise to do as I do. Keep yourself healthy and mentally alert. And drink Ovaltine every day. It's the official drink of the Secret Squadron. Look at this. Ah, got the bullets. Nifty. They were like lead slugs. Put them in the cartridge. Made no sense because I remember my neighbor, I think my neighbor Bruce had this. And after a while, you'd just sit and squash this so you'd never get them back on again or you'd lose them. And then if you put them into the chamber, you know, made noise, but it wasn't the same thing because then you really couldn't put the caps on this. The noise. You just really stick them caps. You guessed it. Anyway, this gun was cool. You take it apart like the real Colt 45. This gun I love. Now, when I was a kid and we played with guns, we'd run around the backyard and nobody thought anything of it. But if you saw kids dressed like that today, and you saw them in your backyard, you'd be on the phone with the police. And here's the finest boys' hostess that ever made. The trail boss, by Mattel, comes with two super-sized shooting shell 45s. Mattel has a fine top grain leather holster set for everyone. Still a great hero, because I love guns, toy guns. I don't like real guns. Anyway, speaking of guns, look at this next commercial. For Camels from Hollywood. Camel Cigarettes present Ed Wynn and Ed's guests, the Three Stooges and Helen Forrest. <laughs> oh, the show is going to be simply ridiculous tonight. What is this? What is this? This is a television camera. Take one. Just a minute, the television camera. Helen, I want you to see this instrument. This is the instrument that takes a picture of my face and it sends it out all over the country. And millions of people sitting in front of their sets looking at me, you know, see. And it gives them a chance to say, uh, who's that? <laughs> we have to see if that set was photographed. Yeah, now, right. a of a Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. This is my show. I will look at it. How 
just a scene, Ed. Well, I can't tell. I'm looking at an old Hopalong Cassidy picture here. You can't... <laughs> Take it over. That boy, Hoppy, gets him every time. <laughs> I reckon you didn't hear what he said. Hi, Hoppy! Drop them guns on the ground unless you're gonna use them. Good boy, Wendy. <laughs> All right, Johnny. Time up. They're through for the day. By the late 1940s, Hopalong Cassidy was box office poison. He was down to touring circuses for two fifty a week. Dynamite. That's the only thing that'll stop him. Come on, we got some in the wagon. By this time, the estate of Clarence Mulford, the character's creator, thought the public was tired of Hopalong Cassidy, so they sold all the remaining rights to Boyd. The boys are still in place we can stop them. They come through this gap, so we'll plant a dynamite right across it. The first show, in fact, ever to be syndicated was Hopalong Cassidy. And that's when promoter Toby Anguish went to local TV stations around the country in an attempt to raise money to edit the feature-length versions of Hopalong Cassidy for TV standards. And the rest, as they say, is history. A kid came up to me this afternoon to ask me for my autograph. I gave it to him, and he slapped my face because I wasn't Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> There's a man that's really doing it. Oh, is he grabbing the loot? <laughs> Old Hopalong. They've got every. He's selling everything. They even have Hopalong bed sheets now to get the kids to bed. <laughs> That's right. Oh, he's the Bank of America with saddlebags. <laughs> what I'd like to do to let Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's uh, Hoppy this and Hoppy that. My kid likes TV, yeah, but uh, I still think he prefers his old man. Oh, you want to bet? What do you mean, bet? Listen, I've heard your Billy and my little Joe talk, and you couldn't play in the same league with that Cassidy. Look, my Billy likes me better than any cowboy, I'll guarantee you that. Your Billy wouldn't give two hoots if you fell over cold in the living room, as long as you didn't fall on a television set and louse up the reception. You want to bet? Bet! Five will get you 20 if your kid bats an eye when I tell him you've been in an accident. Billy, my boy, I don't know how to break the news to you. I'm afraid it's gonna hurt. Billy, your poppy's been injured. He's got a broken leg. In fact, Billy, poppy broke two legs. That's right, two legs and a collarbone. Two legs and a... No, I don't believe it. It's the truth, son. He's in the hospital now and the pain is pretty bad. He wants to see. The pain? Wants to see me? Collie. What will he do? Where will he go? I want to see him. I want to see him. Take me to him. Let me see him. I want to see him. Take me to him. It's all right, Billy. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, my boy. Let me see him. Take it easy, Billy. Billy, 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 wait a minute. Billy, wait a minute. I'm all right. Look, it's your dad. Look, I, 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 my legs are all right. I'm not in the hospital. You mean to see him? What? You mean it was you he was talking about? Sure. Didn't you hear Fred say that Poppy broke two legs? Yeah, I heard him. Look, here I am. Well, I thought he said Hoppy broke two legs. Some folks bring you the right stuff, the wrong stuff, the good stuff, the bad stuff. Ira brings you the rest of the stuff. That's right, the stuff he got his hands on. Oh, there's Pop, oh my daddy. And olive oil and Bluto, too. They're all in the Popeye cartoon kit by color forms. Meanwhile, in another part of the show... I hope one of my friends knows her biograph days as biograph nights is on. Maybe he'll see. I can't find a TV guide. Hello, Porky Pig here. Yeah, when is biograph days biograph nights on, Porky? It's on uh, Saturday at 11.30 p.m. and Sunday at 3.30 p.m. on Channel C or 16. I'm in the bathtub singing the song. Sing with me. Biograph days, biograph nights, biograph days, biograph nights, biograph days, biograph nights, biograph days. On Channel 16 or C. Saturday at 11.30, Sunday at 3.30. Graph days, biograph nights, biograph Days. Ladies and gentlemen, I just received a message from the teletypes that the mother of former heavyweight champion Joe Lewis passed in Detroit this afternoon. I am very sorry to hear it, Joe. New York City. We'll be right back to today's adventures, but again, thanking Ron Alexander, who came to my rescue and did a great article on me in the New York Times. 
Oh, Pookie says it helps keep us healthy. Well, absolutely. You see, we're about to bring images from the golden age of television that haven't been seen since they first aired over 50 years ago. WBKV tonight brings you a national television first. A videotaped afternoon of bullfighting from Mexico City. To get your Winky Wing kit for yourself or for your friends, you send 50 cents, boys and girls. Send 50 cents. Got that? Well, I thought somebody ought to mention it. Well, go ahead. I, could you give me a little sample of your work? I'd like to just see how, you, how you're swinging lately. You're, you're with it. You're you're really, you're really, you're really, you really want a sample? Yes, yes. I've been away the last... I cut out when Al Dexter quit. I don't know. <laughs> see, the people who complain about the low standard of television entertainment are usually the intellectuals or the near intellectuals. And uh, they think because they don't like Westerns that the people don't. But the people do like Westerns, and that's a fact I think must be faced. Marshal Bob is riding trains, the fabulous new galloping horse from Mattel. See, his legs actually move just like a real horse. There's even a lot of Hollywood silent films and early sound shorts to surprise you. And from now on, you're going to take your orders from me. So you came to Barry Caesar. Is it? Remember Benny Rubin? Yes, sir. We're going to have champagne wine and we're going to barbecue a second lieutenant, right? If you like to see a Bob Hope young, how about real young? Now, let me see if I got it right. That goes for Milton Berle. Young and even younger. And now, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen and radio audience, let me say that if we all stick together, we will never be behind. You know, when you call up to get our program guide, we're going to tell you what's coming up on other shows. A little bit about the work I am doing, locating and restoring lost works of TV art. And that's what makes it so wonderful, that we can share these great talents, and I really mean great talents, with you and your children. Because we want to be able to give you and your children what they can't get any other way. Which includes my work to finish a documentary on kids' programming from the 50s and 60s. Blast off! Fairy goes! Man in space! Now, part one of this trilogy is television toys. Then her tears are tested under pressure. Watch out! Now, I want this project out for the holidays, and I need your help now. This is ideal Steve Canyon Jet Helmet, exactly like Steve's. Do you have any home movies playing with some of these classic toys that I have the commercials for? If I could use it in my documentary, I'll transfer it to video for you for free. Kids, this is a toy you've got to have. Especially if you want to be a part of Baby Boomer History. It's a real live radio station. Batteries and everything. And it's good for you. Now let's get to today's adventure. <laughs>